Hello and welcome back to another episode of the van build. As a follow on from our last video, we're going to be taking a look at our electric system. So grab yourself a cup of tea, get comfortable and let's get right into it. So you have to excuse the summer attire. It's just gone at the start of September, but the UK weather has decided to give us a little bit of a heat wave at the moment, so hence the vest. But let's get started breaking down what we did for our electrical system. Now in the last video you would have seen us start our pre-wiring, uh, wiring up the lights and wiring up the max fan as well as running the wires for the diesel heater. All that has been done over the last couple of months while the rest of the build has been taking place. And it wasn't until recently that I could actually finish the electrical system and make this video. I'd firstly like to mention this is not a how-to video in any way. I'm not putting this out to uh, basically give you a tutorial on how to build a system because if I'm quite honest I don't have enough experience to be telling people to do exactly what I've done. I didn't film any of the actual install because I basically didn't want to put a video like that out there. So please take this video with a pinch of salt, do your own research and if you're still unsure then please consult a professional or outsource for this job and get it done professionally. But with that said, let's break it down. So our system has only got to run a very select few things in the van. It's got to run our ceiling lights, our max fan, our diesel heater, our compressor fridge and three USB ports. Aside from that, there's nothing it needs to power. So, our system isn't as big as a lot of the vans out there, and therefore it also didn't cost as much. I think this electrical system probably cost around about eight to nine hundred pounds, and that's including everything, and that's also buying some pretty decent quality stuff, which I will go into. So let's bring you down, give you a closer look, and I'll break down each component, where I got it from, and how everything links together, to make one system. Okay, you'll have to look, excuse the angle I'm coming to you at. Draw me like one of your French girls. I'm just here basically to explain the components I've got and to give you a bit of a better view of the system in its entirety. So, starting right from the bottom, these are our batteries. We were lucky enough to have these for free. That's a big cost which we didn't have to incur when we factored in the, the cost of this system. They're not the best batteries for the job. They are sealed lead acid batteries by Platinum. They're 90 amp hours each, meaning I've got a total capacity of 180 amp hours. Anyone who knows the fundamentals of lead acid will know that if I've got 180 amp hours of total capacity, I really only have 90 amp hours of usable capacity. If I use any more than that before charging the batteries up again, then I risk damaging the batteries long term and just basically giving myself a headache further down the line. So. I've got two batteries so they need to be connected together and to do that you need to make it so the system treats the two batteries as one big battery. So what I've gone and done is use 35mm squared red and black wire connecting the positive to the positive and the negative to the negative of each battery. Feeding off the battery I've got the negative coming off one battery and the positive coming off the next meaning the system drains and charges the batteries as one big battery basically. If you put the positive and negative coming off one battery and left the other just connected to that battery then you would notice that it was being drawn and charged at an inconsistent rate and then down the line the batteries are just going to be uh, experiencing more wear than is necessary really. Leading up from the 35mm cables I've got the negative going to a negative bus bar and the positive going into a master cutoff switch which then also leads into our positive bus bar. Now the positive and negative bus bars essentially just act like a middleman between your appliances and your charging devices to your batteries. They just allow you to have it have a really nice neat install and also for it to be really safe as well. Down the bottom we've got our 12 volt fuse box and it's got 12 ports in it meaning that I can have 12 drawers coming off of our system. Right now we're only using five of the ports and that's going to be expanded by one or two in the next couple of months. But for most cases a 12-way fuse box is going to be ideal for anything you'd like to wire up to it. 
Just next to our 12 way fuse box is a Victron product which I will go into when I get further up our electrical system. Now one of the main stars of the show of this system is our MPPT charge controller. It's a 20 amp Rover controller from Rare Energy. They're a really reputable company and the reviews on it are really good. So we got a kit from Rare Energy which included the solar panels, the solar charge controller and all the wiring and that's worked out really well for us. We've got 200 watts of solar coming down off the roof and those panels are connected in series and they just feed down into a double pole isolator which you can see there um, into our MPPT charge controller and then off to our negative and positive bus bars. With the Renergy charge controller we also got a Bluetooth dongle which means that at any given moment when we're in the van I can go on and check how much solar is coming in and also an approximate charge rate of our batteries which has been really useful already. So next to the double pole isolator we've got the Victron Orion DC to DC charger which essentially converts the power from your alternator to usable power that can be stored in your leisure batteries. This was a really important bit of kit for us to have in this van as we think it's going to be our main source of getting power into our batteries. So we splashed out and we got the Victron unit. We could have combined the solar and DC to DC charger into one unit but we just decided to go for two separate units for the main reason being that if one failed then in our eyes they both would fail so if, our, if something on our DC side DC charging side would fail then that means we're not getting any solar having two separate units means that if one fails we're still going to have a way to charge our, charge our batteries and hopefully it means we're not going to get caught out and then in the far in the far corner we've got our consumer unit which runs from the electric hooker point which is underneath the van. It runs up through a pre-existing hole in the van up to our electrical pillar which then goes across to a chassis ground and then into our consumer unit. Off the consumer unit we've got two UK standard plugs which this bad boy is plugged into. It's essentially a battery charger which means that when we're on hookup we can plug the van into the campsite plug the Victron unit into one of our plugs and then that way we're topping up our batteries and this just gives us yet another way to charge our system. So those are all the devices in our system and I got the majority of them apart from the Renergy products from 12 Volt Planet. They're a really good company and everything on their website is really intuitive and it's all laid out perfectly. Um, I've heard that if you've got any issues or questions you can reach out to the guys at 12 Volt Planet and they are more than happy to help. So. Certainly if you're going to do a build yourself, uh, then definitely check them out because they seem to be quite reasonably priced and the, the added customer support is, is always a bonus. So last thing to mention is just the extra bits which are in this system to make it all tick basically, to make it all work. Every cable coming off each appliance is fused, either at the device or close to the battery. We've got a 30 amp fuse coming off of our MPPT charge controller. We've got a 60 amp coming off our... 12 volt fuse box and that's just in case if there's any overload in the system or a short it's going to flip that fuse before it gets to our battery and therefore won't damage our system and that is basically it broken down like that it's quite simple but it takes a lot of head work i devoted a whole week to get this done and it ended up taking closer to three just waiting for parts to come and, and just trying to get my head around doing the job basically but now that it's done i've got no problems to report at all the system is working flawlessly, DC to DC charger is by far our biggest draw of power and it's keeping our batteries topped up at all times. Now you may be looking at our system and thinking wow that's not a very neat install and to be fair you're right I still need to do a lot of cable management but I wanted to get everything in and working before I started tidying things up just in case I needed to take anything out or fix anything because in all fairness this is my first time putting an electric electrical system into a van so I thought surely I must make a mistake but touch wood the system's working absolutely flawlessly so there we have it that's a brief breakdown of our electrical system like I said this was not meant in any way to be a tutorial or a how to do what I've done because like I said I've not got much experience doing it this is my first install it's not likely to be my last but there are far better videos out there for you to watch to learn how to do this stuff and not listen to silly old me. So I know this was a short one and certainly a more boring video than the last couple because I'm just explaining what I've done.
but I know this kind of information is going to help at least a few of you out there so for that reason alone I wanted to get this video out there. The next couple of videos are all in the front of the van making this van go from a van into a home so stay tuned for that. If you're not subscribed already then please consider subscribing down below, drop the video a like and if you've got any questions or comments please feel free to leave them down below I'll get back to you as soon as I can. And with that being said thank you very much for watching this video and if you're a returning viewer then thank you very much for watching all the other videos. If you haven't already go back and watch part one of this video where you see me wiring up all of our appliances and certainly stay tuned for our next video. But until then I'll see you next time.